Hello, this is Cyberax. Welcome to Outlandishly Crafted. By the ladies and ninjas, uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of model building and some animation. And we'll go over transparency and glow in the dark. Right here, I'm just coloring the blocks while we go through the outlandishly crafted intro. It's really important for your animation that all of the blocks stack into the parent blocks or sibling blocks or sub blocks. So, in the flag here, you can see that I want the post to be the parent of the ropes which will hold the flags and then the first part of the flag needs to be the parent of the middle which needs to be the parent of the end so on the right you can see I'm creating that folder hierarchy we're working in block bench today if you haven't used block bench before you definitely should this is probably not the tutorial for you we have another tutorial of the process for block bench or you can use the block bench tutorials which are great Check those out. This video is somewhere around an hour. I'm not going to provide uh, music. You can always throw some music on the background. I'll jump in and out. Uh, depending on what's going on, but I'm probably not going to talk through the whole thing. Uh, I pre-recorded this and I'm just doing a voiceover. If you do have any questions, you can always hit me up on the Block Bench forums and Discord. I'm typically in the Bedrock support forum. Or you can hit us up at outlandishlycrafted.com, thelazyninjas.com, or don'tpanic.biz. For those who haven't watched my videos before, we'll just quickly go over. I have my tools set to 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, so 1 is the what move tool, 2 is the stretch or size tool, 3 is rotate, and 4 is the pivot tool. This is not the base uh, default settings. You can change that in the options. I like to have them right at my fingertips for the WASD keys from gaming. So I have my tools set to one, two, three, four. There are a few points where I pause and there's just a dead. Typically that's because I'm helping somebody in the block bench form. I try to remove those, but they always sneak their ways in there. So sorry about any pauses. That's just how it goes. I'm sure at some point you'll need support and I'll be pausing some video or making someone else wait too so I can help you out. So when you're doing animation, something critical is your pivot position. So it's really key that you make each of the pivot positions based on the logic of the motion so in the flag, we need to have each of the pivot positions lined up properly. If we wanted to have the post itself rotate, then it's important to have the pivot position for the post also. You can see here where if I put that in the middle like it is, then I'd have problems. I need to have it right on the edge of the flag. And then for each piece, you can also go through and line up each of the segments of the flags like their bones and you want to get each of the bones and each of them lined up. And, it, and I'll go fine tune this once we actually go through the animation process. This tutorial is for Bedrock. You may 
have a different experience with doing Java and others, I suggest you watch a tutorial for those if you're looking for entity making of those types. I'm going to drop out and let you guys listen to some music while we go through the creation process. After this we'll do uh, texturing and then we'll move into animation. So really quick it came up in another form that all of these different things. So the first thing you need to do if you do have a problem is you need to validate your JSON code. You can do that at duckduckgo.com and just type into the search engine JSON validator and it pops up a box in the uh, search engine that you can copy your code into and validate it right there and it'll help you solve the issues and figure out what isn't validated. Maybe you have a comma, maybe you're missing a comma. Uh, but that's something that you need to do first before you get support is validate all of your stuff. The next test uh, or check is you need to check your log files. To check your log files in Bedrock you need to go into your profile settings of the Minecraft game in in game settings and switch on the two log features GUI and file. You need to then restart the game, load up your world, go into your world spawn the entity that's having the problems or that you're testing and then you need to look at the entity save the game close the game and then go look in the log files the log files are in a folder two folders before your game folder so if you're in your minecraft game folder where your world folder is which you should know where that is you would go to subfolders uh, before that will have logs and in logs you can open it up just like a JSON and in the JSON you can see what's happening. The GUI logging which shows you in game allows you to look at an object and see if the render controller is failing or if there's other errors and it shows you it right on the screen so it makes it easy to troubleshoot stuff. Those are the first two things that you should do when you have a problem in Bedrock uh, or any development is do validation, check your logs, and then check the spellings. Next would be third, would be check the spellings of all of your identifiers. The file name does not matter when dealing with JSON add-ins in most cases, only the identifier matters. The file location does not matter. The Minecraft will read all files that have uh, any JSON code in them that is in an add-on, and in those files, if it finds valid JSON code, it will use it. For example, if you have two files in the same folder or anywhere in your add-in, in the resource uh, side, the behavior side, or the resource side, if you have a file in there and the identifier says, say something like um, your pack custom uh, colon uh, chair, and somewhere else you have another file with the identifier custom colon share and then you'll get a random result because you have two files it doesn't matter what folder they're in it doesn't matter what uh, file name there are it doesn't even matter if they're dot json they could be dot bad file they could be dot backup they could be underscore backup it doesn't matter it's still going to read the file and any file that has a valid json you're going to have issues with so it's something that you need to be aware of that you anything that's in the add-on subdirectories for resource packer behavior all files are open and read by Minecraft and any valid JSON is executed and, and you get a random response depending on what's there. You also can put multiple sets of JSON inside a file so you can put two geos in the same file, the models. You could put 20 geos in the same file so you have to be aware that sometimes you might have a whole bunch of content in one file that you don't realize that's there causing effect. So those are things that you need to watch out for. 
there's a lot of things that people get stuck on in Minecraft, especially in development, where the steps aren't easy, uh, and it's not in anybody's best interest to make them easy for you. So it, it's always going to be a struggle, and there's a lot of just trial and error and beating your head against the wall. But the processes and the guides that are out there do typically work. If you're getting stuck on something, especially in the entry level of uh, development, it it's something you're stuck on. It's not the the guide. It's not the software. It's not a bug. It, it's something that you're you are struggling to learn and get past. And so you have to keep that in mind when you go places to ask people for help. Is this isn't a problem with the software or with Bedrock or with JSON or with programming or development. This is a roadblock that you're struggling with some concept to understand. Um, and that's totally okay because everybody does. That's what development is. Everybody struggles with these concepts and you have to, you have to get past it. It's in your best interest to figure out how to get past it on your own as much as you can. You will learn a thousand times more if you figure out how to get past it and the confidence to get past a problem than if somebody holds your hand. And so one of the, the tenets of development and support and development is uh, we'll show you how to do something once and then we'll show you how to access the support content, the support information, the help files, the development files, and then you need to figure out that stuff on your own. If you run into somewhere where you're really just stuck and you've gone through validation, you've gone through the logs, and you've gone through all these other things, and you really just hit a roadblock, then that's totally fine to reach out to support and say, hey, is there something broken here? But keep in mind that even the experts in these fields only know what they've done. There, There is no there's no classes, there's no education, there's no schools, there's no, um, there's no resources. So when you ask somebody about something, they only know from the standpoint of what projects they've done or, or what experience they've had. Otherwise, it's just theory. And so a lot of times what you'll hear is, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Because from their experience, they haven't been able to do it. That doesn't mean you can't do it. It means that they couldn't do it. So keep that in mind. In a lot of places, you're asking people for help um, that may say stuff can't be done just because they haven't done it, not because you can't do it. And it may take beating your head against the wall because no one's done it. Um, that could be. There's a ton of things that nobody's done in these in Minecraft, especially in Bedrock. You may be the very first person to ever do it. So you 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 would kind of expect because of how school is and technology that some someone's out there and they've already done it and they know the answer. And if I can just get to that person and convince them or harass them long enough to give me the answer, then they'll give me the answer. But that's not how the, de the real development world is. Um, the answers don't exist. Nobody knows what the answers are. It's, the code is a beast that's been built by lots of people over lots of time, and nobody has full control and understanding of it all. And it just is what it is. And you, you try to figure out what you can do within this virtual world, but it's just, it's, a, it's an entity to itself. Um, but it's, it's all math. There's, there's no magic. It's all math. So just figuring out how to, how to control work and manipulate the system to do what you want it to do. On the same note, uh, in a lot of my videos, especially when I have time like this, I try to put in um, just some encouragement or in some cases discouragement um, that you don't have to do all of the steps of this process. Very few people will enjoy or feel proficient or not 
hate themselves um, through the entire process of development. If you find yourself getting frustrated and wanting to give up or quit, you, you need to identify and isolate which of the processes of the development that you're struggling with and find someone to do those for you. Pay them if you have to. You will make more money doing the things that you feel proficient and enjoy and are comfortable with and are, are um, having a good time with and learning easily. When you're stressed and you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're not going to learn it very well. It's going to be a real struggle and you can't have that type of relationship with development. Um, I, I think you'll really, really struggle if you get into that relationship. So it's, it's important that if you find that you love animation, but you hate modeling, to find someone that does modeling and hates animation. Um, it, it's important to find that team of people that can help mitigate those things and, and do the different parts. So keep, keep those things in mind. If you're feeling frustrated, or you're running into a brick wall, or you're getting to the point where um, you really want to make progress, but you are struggling, uh, reach out in the jobs list, reach out in the jobs dis the discussion, um, talk to people in the discords and the forums, and try to take some steps to find somebody to help fill in or join a team. There's lots of teams out there looking for people to help um, on on projects and it may mean that you have to work on someone else's project it may not mean that you're working on your own stuff to start but it the benefit is that you'll be learning and you'll be growing that experience and you'll be figuring out how to do things um, to make your stuff better but find those people it's very difficult for someone to be the modding expert and a shading expert or to be the JSON and the behavioral coding and you know do all of these different things so it's just something to keep on keep in mind you can see here in the animation we want to make sure that the beginning and the end of the animations are set to zero this isn't in all cases in some cases you may not want to but in this case I want to have the flag uh, finish and begin at the same spot so that I can have it hand off this is just a really lazy way of doing animation and that's what we're teaching today we're teaching the easiest laziest way to do animation for the best effect so we're using a keyframe we've got the three different segments that we're uh, animating. On a flag, we animate from the tip inward, uh, more movement to less movement, as uh, faster movement to slower movement. And so that's what we've done here. We've moved from the inside, the, the very end, all the, all the way to the base. And we started off with a just a basic movement and we are doing, uh, I think I have four or five that I do in here. Mm, so we've got a fast movement, a slow movement, uh, or light and heavy. And then we've got a flag dropping down and flag uh, picking up. And then kind of an idle just sitting. And so we can put all that together uh, with transitions and different events. So, for example, when there's bad weather and it's storming out, the flag could go heavy. Um, and when it's nice and, you know, cool, maybe at night the, uh, the flag waves um, less or more or whatever you want. It's, it's kind of the Bob Ross of the world. It's up to you. I think the flag actually turned out really nice. I, I did lie earlier. I said we were going to do uh, texture then animation, but it turns out I did animation and texture. I recorded this last night. Um, it's actually uh, 7.30 a.m. where I'm at, and I've been going all of this morning. Um, so I recorded this yesterday morning, <laughs> late, in, late in the morning. Uh, so there's some disconnect of my brain since then. But I think it turned out nice.
I'm gonna jump back off for a minute. You can see the animations, but right here the hint is uh, stop start at zeros uh, for your stuff. And then you can see at the top we created a different animation. All these are gonna go into one animation file. And on the right we've got all of our bones uh, set out together. We're gonna add a few more details in here and do some texturing next. And then we'll talk about um, glow and transparency.
Okay, we're back. Now we're doing texturing. I'm gonna do this in Illustrator. I prefer to use Illustrator. You could do it in Photoshop, you could do it in Paint, you could do whatever you want. Um, but what we're gonna do is we've got some text here, it's white. I like to do this first. I line it up and then I create my mask. Uh, my mask and the mask is just cutting out what's white from it. So I I put it on top of it and I jump out of the mask. And now I'm going to turn off, I'm going to add a line, and I'm going to turn off the middle. And we're doing this so that it has a colored glow um, and, and has a little more to it. You could just cut out the text, but I find that adding a line that's thick and has a, a little bit to it um, gives you more. And you can add color and you can do a little bit there. So... And in the mask, it's nothing. We just cut it out. So we have lazy cut out. You can see it's transparent. Uh, whatever for glow is transparent will glow. The more transparent, the brighter the glow. But the color of the glow seems to be based on uh, some, some factor of the coloring around. And so I'm going to add green to the lazy there. And then what we're also going to do is we have this bar and on the bar so you can kind of get a feel of how this all works and what it looks like we're going to add some lines to it and each line will make a different color and then we're going to apply this texture to the bar as well so the bar line should have a slight glow with multiple colors and the lazy on the flag itself should have the lazy and I'm gonna do this all in Illustrator so you can see it I also make mistakes in here and then you can see me troubleshooting my mistakes and fixing them so there's places that you'll see that I struggle with a few things and I think a lot of people take those out um, mo everybody does nobody leaves them in and so I leave that stuff in here purposely so you can see it because I think everybody runs into it. Everybody runs into frustrations of clicking the wrong box and you can see that I go up and I lock that layer. Um, everybody runs into the frustration of trying to get your mask to work properly and so I kind of show my troubleshooting. Um, so as I go through these and as I bounce back and forth I try to leave that stuff in so you know always try to watch through the full segment of me doing something until it's done and I always stop at the end and you know kind of look at it and admire it or look at my progress um, just to make sure that you're not doing it one watch through and I lead you astray and then you have to fix it the same way um, but for the most part you know everything's done there's a billion ways to do anything but uh, I, this process typically works pretty well um, but yeah there's a few of those places where man I, I just struggled with grabbing the wrong layer or the like because I'm on a 144 uh, K screen or whatever it is 14.4 um, the uh, trying to grab those lines with a transparency around them it's very difficult to grab them and not grab the other ones so right here you can see I'm gonna lock it I'm gonna lock everything that I'm not working with and then that makes it a little easier to grab them and move them even then it still didn't grab it and move it the very first time now I could zoom in that would help some um, it just depends on what I'm doing and how much space I want to see how stuff lines up but right there I'm doing copy and paste uh, which is control C for copy and control V for paste you'll see me doing a lot of that I'll just be copying and paste back and forth I also do a ton of that when I do the texturing which is coming up next Okay, I think that's it for transparency and glow. Um, transparency and glow are pretty much the same, just depends on which material you use. So if you use a transparent material, it'll just be that. If you use an emission glow uh, alpha, then you'll get a glow on any of those. There's a way to manipulate and manage those um, for what glows based on the transparency. 
what I have found so far is it seems to be all or nothing. There are other ways that people said to control transparency in limited places. So say you wanted to have it glow, eyes, and a transparent chest like a skeleton, but I haven't uh, done that. Uh, this is really just basic transparency or basic glow to show you that process. So we want the flag to have the lazy be see-through and we want it to glow at night and then we want the where the lines are there's transparency behind each line we want that to glow and we want to get a little bit of a color from the line itself do remember when you uh, do this that you have to export the PNG with transparency you can export a PNG without transparency and that won't help you uh, it has to be transparent so always keep in mind that you have to be uh, making sure that your PNG file one is a real PNG file you can't just take a JPEG and rename it to PNG this isn't magic it's math so the the encoding of the files does matter and so the language of PNG is different than the language of JPEG so when you export it you need to make sure that you're exporting it as a PNG file you have two to three options depending on the program that you use. You have an 8-bit PNG file, which is 256 color, 8-bit. You have a 24-bit, which is like 16 million. And then you have a 32-bit, which is uh, 24 million, I believe. Right now, you can use the 8 or the 16. And going forward with PB PBR uh, textures, with the ray tracing and RTX, you have to use a 32-bit but you're fine to use uh, 24 as long as the transparency is turned on when you want transparency. If you don't want transparency, then you can use black as the background or white as the background. Okay, we've finished our texture. We're dragging it in. And now we need to go through and resize all of the different faces to fit the texture. So right away we add in our wood which turned out nice. We have our lines in there to show off just the different glow and the different pieces of that. Now there's not a lot of transparency there so there's not a lot of glow. It's just it's just very minute but it just gives you an idea of the process. Uh, right here I'm copying and pasting the faces so it, it's just easier because they are so small by default to copy and paste them so all you see when I bounce between each one of those I'm just pasting it to each of the faces so I'm pasting the same texture to each of them in, in some cases you might want to go back and do finish make the ends look nicer the ratios for each of them this is kind of the lazy quick way to do it you can always make them nicer but most people won't look at the end of the wood and notice that the ratio is off by 33 percent or 20 percent so it's a time assessment right here you can see this is why i copy and paste because i can't ever get the mouse to grab the damn thing and it's just a it's so aggravating so typically i copy and paste them So right there, that's what I did. Copy and pasted it to each. I don't know. I have the add-in for it to show you guys my key clicks, but for some reason it's not giving you. should be showing you my key clicks at the bottom. Uh, one of the things, a question we get all the time with transparency, People don't think about the double-sided. Everything is double-sided. Everything is a cube. So if you make a transparency on one side, you're going to have to flip it on the other side so that it, it, it matches up because it's not going to match up unless you flip the texture. You can see at the top I've added the flip UV for north and south, east and west. That's in the toolbar. You can get that if you go to the toolbar options and you can... Uh, set those and put them on your toolbar. I highly suggest it. The other one on the right side under uh, Outfitter, the 
the uh, bones is the auto collapse. That's another important one to have. Okay, you can see our animation with our textures came along really well. That worked great. We have a transparency with a green outline. You can see through the flag and both sides line up. It's correct on one side and uh, flipped on the other. Our lines on the wood match up and our animation plays good. There's a little bit of a line between the Z and the Y. Um, that you could always clean up too if you wanted but it's just not something that was noticeable enough that I, I cared to go back it looks fine in almost all of the animation except the very extreme of the bend of the very end there's a slight place where you can see the corner and so you could uh, you could mi mitigate that uh, in a few different ways so here I'm just gonna add in some rope and then we've got pretty much everything ready to go and then the rest of this is going to be adding in the code same thing with adding in the code you always make mistakes you always miss something um, every time every entity uh, don't get frustrated it's just how it is try to get it to where you have your stuff templated and have everything easy together and if you really get stuck pull up all of the JSON files on the screen together at once you can always put them side by side and compare them to see uh, what's not spelled right or what you missed. It's almost always an identifier. It's very rarely anything else. So, or render controllers missing, or, but it, I, I found that probably 90% of my invisible entities, which is the number one question we get asked about, is because I messed up the geo name, or I messed up the render controller name, or I messed up some other name somewhere and it, it, it's math it's not magic so it has to be exact so you have to go through and figure out if it doesn't all add up to the right you know equal if everything doesn't add up to 100% and you only get 80% of your stuff and it's invisible but the codes there then something in your math equation is not correct and you got to go back through the process to where you can find it once again, it's not a bug, it's not bench, block bench, it's not bedrock, it's not Java, it's not Windows, it's, it's the code. You're telling the software what to do, and if you don't tell it the right thing to do, it can't do it. So we've got our ropes in here. Uh, I'm going to drop out one more time until we get back to the coding. I think there's a few things that I wanted to go over when we do the, the uh, JSON coding for entities. So I'll be back here shortly.
Okay, I'm back. Let's talk over the animations in the JSON file right here. So we have an entity file. We need to list each of the animations, uh, the name of the animation, and the you can say like the dot at the end is the action of the animation is kind of how it's set up. So we have an animation. We have flag dot b or underscore b dot, and then what is it? What's the animation going to be? So this is a wave up. And then we can classify that. You could almost think of it like a keyword, the base at the beginning. That's how you're going to call the animation. So I'm going to duplicate this multiple times. I'm going to mess up, of course. you got to mess up when you're recording over and over. It's just how it goes. <laughs> Once again, I did this pretty late in the morning, so there's always that too. So we got to name what it is. You choose all this stuff. So that's why it's kind of, it's always a pain to to do development up front because you're trying to learn the logic but everything can be named anything so I'm gonna name it up and then I'm gonna name it one a light and one none and one heavy and we already named these in the animation file before so we need to match them up but these first ones are just the keywords that we can call in the animation uh, controller or in the script below right now we're gonna focus on script and not deal with an animation controller we'll do that in a different video this is really just to get you started up with a looping animation so we'll go over in a different video the animation controller which is setting up uh, handoffs and the events that trigger them and all of that stuff that's really a whole nother video so this will get you started where you can have a flag that waves and then we'll go into okay well it's storming out uh, and we'd want to have the flag wave heavier or we want to do the transition between raising and lowering but right now we have all of that animation programmed we have all of it in our file and we'll do that at a later date just the joys of tutorials uh, so right now we've got our file made we're going through we're naming everything we've got heavy um, I think multiple times I had to reference to make sure that I had the same name, the identifier set for different things. There's just there's so many different variables. Um, I'm also overriding my flag A with flag B to cheat just to save time. Um, so typically you're gonna not you know not do this. You would just make a new file. Uh, so you duplicate all of this, duplicate every file and make it flag B versus flag A. Um, but of course I wanted to try to get through it faster so I used flag A and was just going to swap out the geo and the texture but then I ran into a problem because I didn't name it correctly in one of the files and you know it, it's, it is how it is. I, I swear I, I don't know that I've added more than like 10% of my entities and not messed up a naming somewhere in there and sometimes I just give up and go to bed um, and other times I just spend hours looking for it it just it's just one of those things that you just have to get through at some point I may uh, make some cheat sheets and flowcharts and put out on the website that you guys could get just to make it a little easier I think having a cheat sheet by your workstation um, for the flow would would always be nice so right here there's a few things I did off screen I didn't mean to I have multiple screens it was really just so I could see the file names I went back to Blockbench and I exported the animation file I exported the the model geo I'd already done it on screen but when I did it I didn't do it into my add-in I did it into my my repository and so I needed to do it again into the pack so I did that off screen and then right here I'm just renaming the files to match up with the JSONs making sure that the file is the file I want and then going through and making sure that the uh, naming and folder paths for the texture match up correctly and then this is where I made my mistake um, before I didn't do HD blocks on the geo I just did geo flag B and so that's where I spent this extra time um, and then of course I messed it up there again 
because I didn't take out LH blocks. Just one of those things. I took out all except, you know, I took out most of it. Just, just the fun times. So, every time you have to close the game all the way out and relaunch the whole game. You can see I have uh, GUI logging on. In this world I'm loading, we have thousands of different objects. So, there's always things that we've deleted that give errors. We just haven't taken the time to go through and delete them out of the world. You can ignore all that stuff. This is a prot prototyping world, so there's lots of things you could ignore. So right here, this is always interesting. It's giving me a uh, no render controller error, but I know the render controller is right. So when it says no render controller, it, it also could mean that the geo doesn't match up. So the geo file name doesn't match up properly. And you can see that here I have it uh, geo um, flag B, but in the entity file I have it geo uh, LHG blocks flag B. And that doesn't work. So I go look. Oh, yeah, the render controller. Oh, but did you see it said ground right there? So that's part of my problem is I had it, I was using a different naming scheme when I made this original file. So the render controller says uh, LHD block dot ground. So that's wrong. And the, uh, you can see the geo is wrong. So it's just, it's that it, when you're o changing and overriding files, you always get in this. So one of the good habits would be to create template files um, with you know change name here or something and instead of changing good entities uh, change the templates instead and you could always have you know 20 templates already pre pre put in and it takes me a while to figure this out it's just annoying I even make a new render controller. I guess I could say, oh, I did this to show you guys how to make another render controller, but I didn't. I, I just did it because I was like, well, maybe it's, it's not showing up and it's saying render controller, but it, that wasn't the issue. The issue was I wasn't pointing the uh, all of the files to the right place. I wasn't telling Minecraft the right files to access with the right identifiers and that's the number one problem is the identifiers have to match up with what the JSON entity file is telling them to do and if they don't then you're gonna get invisible entities now if you can't summon the entity then that's the behavior file so if you can't summon at all you go to some and it doesn't show up as an option in the autofill then that right away tells you that it's a behavior problem but if you can summon it uh, and it doesn't show up then that's back to the other side so right here again I fixed the render controller problem I think because I still have ground in there I didn't put ground in the render controller I don't remember I don't think so but this was driving me nuts because I, it says it's like render controller render controller and you're like well I just made a custom render controller but it also says render controller A but I set render controller to render controller B so how does that work right so then I'm like well what the hell man and so there is a issue with um, file length like the name of the the how long a file name is um, so what a lot of people don't understand is the file name includes the folders before it so all of those subfolders you see from um, where my add-in start that all counts and you only get 255 characters total you're supposed to stay with under 70 but I've run into times where my files weren't working because they were over the file limit 
so you always have that in the back of your mind that oh maybe I have too long of a file name or oh, maybe I have something like that that's causing a problem in this case it, it wasn't I just had I, I had extra words in there that I wasn't calling because when I built the original flag it was for a ground project and when I built this flag it was for a tutorial so I named them one word different which caused them not to connect which is very frustrating but it lets you guys see the troubleshooting steps it went through um, which everybody asks everybody gets stuck into this especially the very first time or two it's always sh it always shocks me when the entity shows up properly especially the very first time I always go in expecting the first time for it not to work but there it is we finally got it in animations functioning On scale and size, you could scale it up. I, I obviously made it small just because it's a demo, but you could scale it. The only issue would be that when you scale it, that the wood post is going to scale too. And so, what you may need to do is uh, scale it in Block Bench instead of scaling it in the game so that you could still. And then you wouldn't want to stretch the, the pull. You would want to duplicate the pull and then flip the texture so that the um, you don't want to stretch the texture f more than one <coughs> full block because then it's going to not fit properly. The ratio would be off. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Check out our website, uh, outlandishlycrafted.com or the lazyninjas.com. I'm Cyberax. Thanks for watching.